So looking at how we get these metrics, everything we derive from logs. So these logs come back from the end user devices. Uh, they are JSON formatted logs, so not just arbitrary strings, um, but they come through and they may or may not contain certain fields. Some of them conform to some schemas, some don't. So these will arrive at the, the cloud edge into the log servers, which will then make them available on Kafka topics. We ha then have a series of jobs that run in a Mantis cluster. Mantis is an open source project built by Netflix, which is designed for real-time uh, pipeline processing. So we can manipulate whatever needs to be manipulated or extract values or create or merge, whatever we need to do in there. So we'll, we'll look at that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, after we've manipulated these logs and extracted the values we want to extract, we put them onto new Kafka topics. Here we maintain right now one Kafka topic per data source for easier alignment. And then we use Druid real-time ingestion to read those Kafka topics into data sources. So what does the measure extraction look like? We get a lot of logs with more information than we actually want to extract from uh, the measures here. There are certain fields that we would, we're just not interested in at this point, or maybe some debug logs within those um, the log fields. So in that Mantis job, we will extract just the measures we want, and we will format them into a very flat key value structure, which is ideal for going into Druid. So in this case, we, we pulled out some fields. We, we do a little bit of enrichment here as well in real time. So um, if we get uh, just a, a, a particular device type, we, we can enrich that with the model and the, uh, the manufacturer and that kind of thing. So using Druid, how does it look today? We have a pretty typical cluster setup, I think. Uh, some of the questions we've been having today have been about asking about how this is structured. And we use a different server for every instance here. So we have our real-time nodes, our broker nodes, historical nodes, coordinators, zookeepers, and overlords all on separate instances and all in separate ASGs within Amazon. So some of the flows we may have, we have ingestion coming in through Kafka. We do not do any batch ingestion into this cluster. Uh, the real-time nodes will subscribe to those Kafka topics, create the segments as they're going, and eventually hand them off into deep storage into S3. So uh, at handoff time, the, the segment is written out to S3, and then the coordinator nodes will tell some historicals to load that, and then once that's loaded, the real-time load nodes will unload that segment. And that's because when queries come in, the broker nodes can direct queries directly to those real-time segments. So as soon as a single event lands in that data source, it is queryable. It will also direct uh, queries to the historical nodes if it's for a time period that's outside of what we're keeping in the real-time nodes. So we see zero downtime during handoff. The queries, if they need to be live, will come into the real-time nodes. And once that segment has been handed off, the queries will then be directed to the historical nodes. This has been working pretty well for us. Uh, don't see problems there very often, if ever, anymore. <laughs> 